The investment and financing cycle plays a pivotal role in an organization's operations, encompassing the management of financial resources, capital structure decisions, and investment activities. As auditors, the responsibility is to ensure that these financial transactions are not only accurately recorded, but also comply with relevant accounting standards and regulations. We will cover a range of topics, including identification of key accounts, risk assessment, and the audit procedures specific to the investment and financing cycle. We will explore how auditors evaluate management assertions related to completeness, accuracy, and valuation of financial information. We will also discuss the significance of understanding an entity's internal controls related to investments and financing. A robust internal control system is essential for preventing and detecting errors and fraud, which could significantly impact financial reporting. Additionally, we will address the challenges and complexities inherent in auditing this cycle, such as evaluation of complex financial instruments, assessing fair value measurements, and evaluating the reasonableness of management's estimates. The financing function involves obtaining the necessary funds to support a company's operations and investments. It's about determining the optimal capital structure, which includes a mix of debt and equity to meet the company's financial needs. Sources of financing include issuing stocks to investors representing ownership in the company, borrowing money through loans or issuing bonds with an obligation to repay, or using profits generated by the company that are not distributed as dividends. The investment function involves the process through which a company allocates its financial resources to acquire assets that are expected to generate future income or enhance the overall value of the firm. Investments can take various forms, including physical assets like machinery, equipment, and real estate, non-physical assets such as patents, trademarks, and intellectual property, and financial assets such as securities, stocks, bonds, and other financial instruments. In the context of auditing the financing and investment cycle, significant accounts include investments, long-term debt, capital stock, and retained earnings. Relevant assertions related to those accounts include existence, completeness, valuation, presentation, and disclosure. For example, when auditing investments in securities, auditors would verify that the investments actually exist and are owned by the entity. They would ensure that all investments are recorded and none are omitted. And they would assess whether the investments are valued accurately in accordance with accounting standards. With respect to long-term debt, auditors would confirm the existence of the debt obligations, ensure that all long-term debt is appropriately recorded, and verify that the entity has legal obligations for the debt. For the equity accounts, auditors would ensure that all relevant transactions affecting equity are appropriately recorded, and they would verify that the presentation of equity in the financial statements is in accordance with accounting standards and any required disclosures are adequately provided. Accounting and reporting failures related to the investment and financing cycle can have significant consequences for financial reporting accuracy and transparency. Some common failures include inaccurate valuation of investments, especially when using complex financial instruments or models. This can lead to misstatements in financial statements. Overstating or understating the value of investments can distort the financial position and performance of the entity. Also, inadequate disclosures. Failing to provide sufficient disclosures about the nature and risk of investments or financing arrangements can lead to a lack of transparency, which can lead to misunderstandings among stakeholders, impairing their ability to assess the entity's financial health and risk exposure. The complexity of transactions in the investment and financing cycle introduces a higher risk of material misstatement for several reasons. Complex financial instruments often lack readily observable market prices. Valuation is often based on models, assumptions, and estimates. The subjective nature of these valuations increase the risk of misstatements as different interpretations or assumptions can lead to varying values. 
Many transactions in the investment and financing cycle involve assets and liabilities measured at fair value. Determining fair value, especially for illiquid or unique instruments, requires subjective judgment and estimation, increasing the risk of misstatement. For example, derivatives and other financial instruments often involve intricate structures and features. The complexity of these instruments introduces a higher risk of misstatement as their valuation and accounting treatments can be challenging and subject to interpretation. Financing transactions, especially with complex debt structures, may involve various terms, conditions, and covenants. The complexity of these arrangements increases the risk of misstatement in assessing compliance with debt covenants and accurately accounting for the associated financial instruments. Financial reporting standards often require the use of fair value hierarchy levels with level one being the most observable and level three being the least observable inputs. The complexity arises when determining the appropriate level for valuation inputs, leading to potential misclassification and misstatement. Many transactions involve estimates and assumptions related to future events, such as expected cash flows, discount rates, or the useful life of assets. The inherent uncertainties in these estimations contribute to the risk of misstatement. Related party transactions within the investment and financing cycle introduce a higher risk of misstatement due to the potential for biased decision-making, lack of arm's length terms, and increased complexity in assessing the fairness of these transactions. For example, related party transactions may not be conducted at arm's length meaning the terms of the transactions may not be as favorable or as economically rational as those in transactions between unrelated parties. This lack of independence can lead to misstatements in the valuation or terms of the transactions. Overall, given these complexities, auditors need to exercise a higher degree of professional skepticism and apply robust audit procedures to address the increased risk of misstatement in the investment and financing cycle. Thorough risk assessments, testing of internal controls, and detailed substantive procedures are essential to ensure the accuracy and reliability of financial statements in this cycle. Inherent risks related to investments and securities are factors that make financial statement misstatements more likely due to the nature of the investments. For example, the existence of securities and their proper valuation can be challenging, especially for complex financial instruments or in cases where markets are illiquid. Determining the fair value of securities, particularly when markets are illiquid or when there are no observable market prices, can be subjective and complex. Effective internal controls play a crucial role in mitigating inherent risks related to investment securities. Some examples of key internal controls include authorization and approval controls. These controls ensure that all investment transactions are authorized and approved by individuals with the appropriate level of authority. This control helps prevent unauthorized, inappropriate investment transactions. Segregation of duties entails separating the functions of initiating, approving, recording, and reconciling investment transactions to avoid conflicts of interest and prevent fraudulent activities. Segregation of duties reduces the risk of errors of fraud by requiring multiple individuals to be involved in the investment process. Clear investment policies and procedures have the objective of establishing and communicating clear investment policies and procedures, outlining permissible investments, risk tolerance, and decision-making criteria. Well-defined policies guide investment decisions and ensure consistency, reducing the risk of inappropriate investments. The existence of long-term debt and its accurate valuation can be challenging, especially if there are complex debt structures or if the terms of the debt agreements are intricate. Ensuring compliance with debt covenants may be challenging, especially if there are uncertainties about the financial health of the entity. Also, Long-term debt may not be completely recorded or there could be omissions of certain debt-related transactions from the financial statements.
Examples of key internal controls related to long-term debt include authorization and approval controls. These controls ensure that there is a well-defined process for authorizing and approving new long-term debt issuances or modifications to existing debt agreements. Authorization should involve individuals with the appropriate level of authority. This control helps prevent unauthorized or inappropriate long-term debt transactions. Segregation of duties are also important. By separating the functions of initiating, approving, recording, and reconciling long-term debt transactions, this will help avoid conflicts of interest and prevent fraudulent activities. Segregation of duties reduces the risk of errors or fraud by requiring multiple individuals to be involved in the long-term debt process. Organizations should have clear debt policies and procedures. They should establish and communicate clear debt policies and procedures outlining permissible terms, conditions, and decision-making criteria, which ensure that all debt-related transactions comply with these policies. Well-defined policies guide debt-related decisions and ensure consistency, reducing the risk of inappropriate debt arrangements. Companies should also develop monitoring mechanisms to track compliance with debt covenants, repayment schedules, and other contractual obligations, and establish reporting structures for regular reviews. Timely monitoring helps identify potential issues or deviations from contractual arrangements enabling corrective action. Inherent risks related to equity include the risk of incomplete recording or omission of stock issuances or repurchases from the financial statements. Additionally, complex stock transactions such as stock-based compensation, convertible securities, or hybrid instruments may be challenging to understand and account for accurately. There is also the risk of inadequate presentation or disclosure of changes in capital stock, such as stock splits, bonus issues, or changes in part value, which can lead to misunderstandings among stakeholders. Inadequate disclosure of changes in retained earnings, including factors influencing profit retention or distribution of dividends, may also lead to misunderstandings about the company's financial performance. Some examples of key internal controls to mitigate the risk in equity include authorization and approval controls. These controls ensure there is a well-defined process for authorizing and approving new issuances of common stock or modifications to existing equity arrangements. Authorization should involve individuals with the appropriate level of authority. This control helps prevent unauthorized or inappropriate equity transactions. Separating the functions of initiating, approving, recording, and reconciling equity transactions avoids conflicts of interest and prevents fraudulent activities. Segregation of duties reduces the risk of errors or fraud by requiring multiple individuals to be involved in the equity process. An organization should establish and communicate clear equity policies and procedures outlining permissible terms, conditions, and decision-making criteria. This ensures that all equity-related transactions comply with the policies. Well-defined policies guide equity-related decisions and ensure consistency, reducing the risk of inappropriate equity arrangements. In addition to test the controls, auditors perform substantive audit procedures to gather evidence about account balances. The extent of substantive audit procedures will depend on the auditor's level of reliance on internal controls. Some examples of substantive audit procedures to address relevant management assertions include procedures to physically inspect selected investment securities held by the entity. This helps verify the existence of the securities and provides evidence about the accuracy of their valuations. Auditors can also obtain confirmations directly from the custodian or broker regarding the existence and valuation of the securities. Independent confirmation from external parties adds credibility to the valuation and existence assertions. Auditors will also perform procedures to reconcile the investment records maintained by the entity with external records such as confirmations from custodians or brokers. Reconciliations help ensure that all investments, including any held by third parties, are appropriately recorded. 
Auditors also analyze subsequent investment transactions and events occurring after the balance sheet date to ensure that all material investment activity is recorded. This helps identify any investment transactions that occurred shortly after the balance sheet date but should be accounted for in the current period. Auditors will engage, if necessary, a third-party valuation expert to assess the fair value of complex or hard-to-value investment securities. External validation enhances the reliability of fair value measurement. Compare the fair values provided by management to observable market prices or other independent sources. The rationale of this procedure is to ensure the reasonableness and accuracy of fair value measurements. Additionally, auditors will evaluate the classification of investment securities within the fair value hierarchy by reviewing supporting documentation and understanding the valuation methodologies. The rationale for this procedure ensures proper classification and disclosure in accordance with accounting standards. Some examples of substantive audit procedures for long-term debt include physically inspecting debt agreements, promissory notes, and related documentation. This helps verify the existence of the long-term debt and ensures that it is properly valued. Auditors can also confirm the outstanding long-term debt directly with the lender or debt holders. Independent confirmation from external parties provides assurances about the existence and valuation of long-term debt. Auditors also examine board minutes, loan agreements, and other relevant documents to identify any unrecorded long-term debt. This ensures that all long-term debt obligations are appropriately recorded in the financial statements. Auditors will trace long-term debt balances to the general ledger and supporting documentation. This is done to verify that all long-term debt transactions are accurately recorded and included in the financial statements. Auditors review debt agreements to confirm that the entity has the legal right to the long-term debt. This ensures that the entity is the rightful owner of the debt and understands any associated obligations. Auditors may also recalculate the amortization of debt-related costs to ensure accuracy. This verifies that the amortization of debt-related costs is in accordance with accounting standards. They also may assess the sensitivity of long-term debt to changes in interest rates and evaluate the appropriateness of any interest rate hedging instruments, which addresses the risk of misstatement due to interest rate fluctuations. With respect to debt covenant compliance, Auditors will obtain and review compliance certificates and other documentation to confirm adherence to debt covenants. This ensures that the entity is complying with the terms and conditions specified in the debt agreements. They will perform calculations and testing to independently verify compliance with financial covenants, which assures the entity's ability to meet its financial obligations. Substantive audit procedures designed to gather evidence about stockholders' equity include physically inspecting stock certificates and other evidence of ownership. This helps verify the existence of stockholders' equity and ensures that it is properly valued. Also, auditors can confirm the number of outstanding shares directly with the registrar or transfer agent. This independent confirmation provides assurance about the existence and valuation of stockholders' equity. Auditors also will trace the balances of stockholders' equity accounts to the board minutes, subscription agreements, and other supporting documents. This ensures that all equity transactions, including new issuances, are accurately recorded. Auditors will also reconcile the total number of outstanding shares to the stockholders' equity accounts and supporting documentation to verify that all equity transactions are appropriately recorded in the financial statements. Auditors also evaluate the adequacy of the disclosure of stockholders' equity in the financial statements, ensuring compliance with accounting standards. This verifies that the presentation and disclosure are transparent and in accordance with applicable accounting standards. Auditors will also confirm that the terms and conditions of different classes of stock are appropriately disclosed, including dividend preferences and voting rights. This ensures that stakeholders have sufficient information to understand the nature of stockholders' equity. Procedures related to dividends include verifying the accuracy of dividend calculations 
by recalculating the expected dividends based on the terms of the stock agreements. This confirms that dividend recognition aligns with the terms of the stock agreements. They will also confirm that any dividend payments made during the period are accurately recorded and disclosed, ensuring accurate presentation of dividends in the financial statements. 